Welcome, and thank you for watching our second episode in our Top Trends in Education video series. These videos are a series of discussions with industry experts that aim to shed light on current trends shaping the education future. I'm Joe Brazier, Senior Business Strategy Manager for Worldwide K-12 Education at Microsoft. We're talking today about how inclusive design and accessibility can improve education for all. We're excited to speak with Donna Murray. She's a consultant for the Office of Digital Teaching and Learning at North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, where she's supporting the design and implementation of effective digital teaching and learning environments. She is also a consultant for digital accessibility and universal design and co-leads the North Carolina Accessible Education Materials Leadership Team. As a parent of a disabled child, she is passionate about inclusive design and the intersection of accessibility and technology. I think most people understand the idea of making learning more inclusive for everyone, but tell me what universal design for learning is and how it can help achieve this goal in practical ways. UDL is really about removing barriers to learning. So when you think about like a curb cut, which was originally designed to allow wheelchair users to transition from the sidewalk to the street, you can consider how others might benefit from that curb cut, like someone who's making a delivery or someone who's pushing a stroller. So we call that the curb cut effect when design proactively removes those barriers that are essential for some people, but potentially could be useful for everyone. That is inclusive design. So but by designing technologies that include universal accessibility features, we are really proactively providing flexibility for how students engage in their learning. And these accessible technologies along with assistive technologies that are really designed to meet very specific needs of some of our students with disabilities, those help ensure that we're removing barriers and, and really providing access to every learner. As you were talking, uh, I was thinking about multimodal learning, which allows learners to access content in multiple ways so they can choose what works best for them. Beyond that, I haven't heard much about the ideas of like multimodal teaching. Uh, how do we build the capacity of our educators to teach more uh, in more than just one way? Well, when I talk with educators and <clears throat> educational leaders, I really challenge them to rethink the definition that they have in their mind of disability in general, and to really think about how it's a disconnect between a person and their environment. And that's what UDL and multimodal learning and inclusive design are really all about. Uh, every student we have is a variable learner. And when we focus on changing the environment rather than changing the learner, we really make learning more accessible. And it's not just our variable student learners that we have to design for. Our educators are variable learners as well. Um, generally speaking, I think there's a lack of knowledge and understanding about accessibility and about universal design. Um, so designing accessible professional learning opportunities for educators is essential too, so that we can improve that understanding. Um, I believe that we need to challenge assumptions about what students with disabilities are able or not able to do. More and more technology operating systems and and software are really designed with embedded universal accessibility functionalities. And so we can leverage those features to support the complex needs of all of our variable learners. Since you mentioned it, uh, let's focus on technology. We're talking about getting educators more familiar with the tools available for inclusive and multimodal learning and teaching. Uh, how involved have you seen technology and IT officers uh, or experts when it comes to accessibility tools in education? So I think historically information technology and assistive and inclusive technology have kind of lived in, in silos in education. And so as education leaders are making those decisions about procuring hardware and other digital resources, we have to recognize the importance of that being a shared responsibility. Uh, currently, I think there are many educational technologies that are not being designed through the lens of accessibility. And we have an opportunity and I believe a responsibility to elevate the topic of digital accessibility with 
vendors and product designers because it is much easier to design accessible products when accessibility standards are considered throughout the entire design process rather than having to address accessibility issues after the product design is complete. Um, in order to effectively design accessible technology and create accessible learning environments, we have to include learners with disabilities in the discussions. Their voices and experiences are critical if we are authentically committed to creating accessible educational opportunities for each and every learner. How much data do we have uh, about how UDL and inclusive learning can impact outcomes? Uh, it seems like it could help bring more focus to this topic. Uh, I've, I've had a conversation before with a special education teacher who said making effective use of all that collected data from students can be a challenge. Absolutely. And, and using data to inform instruction is critical. It's a critical component to personalizing learning for students. And even through a broader lens, data can, can help education leaders examine that impact that you're talking about, that impact of accessibility and UDL on student outcomes. But we have to be intentional about identifying what data we need, how are we going to analyze and synthesize that data, and then how are we going to use that data to inform instructional decisions. Uh, I think it's also important that we help students use data to monitor their own learning. Uh, in doing so, I think we are really empowering them to reflect on their own understanding, to set goals and progress, and to develop some self-advocacy skills. So technology you know, really enables educators and learners to collect and access that relevant just-in-time data. And we can analyze that data to really identify those strengths, those trends over time, and, and really gaps in knowledge so that we can inform those next steps in our students' learning. One of the goals of education is to prepare students for careers as well as potentially continuing to higher education. How do you see inclusive learning and accessibility fitting into that? As I mentioned, every student is a variable learner. And so in order to prepare each one for their personal pathway, we must remove those learning barriers. And accessibility and inclusive design are about doing just that. It's about changing uh, the environment, the learning environment, rather than changing the learners themselves so that all students have the access that they need. And as we look ahead to improving accessibility in education, I think we have an opportunity to directly impact the future of accessible design. Uh, today's students are going to be tomorrow's designers. So we have to create opportunities now so that our students can learn about digital accessibility and how to design user products and and user experiences that are accessible for all. Well, thank you, Donna, for sharing your perspective in this insightful discussion. If you're interested in hearing more uh, perspectives and top trends in education, watch the rest of the series, which features our industry experts discussing the latest trends they're seeing in the intersection of technology and education. Stay tuned for next episode and hope to see you soon.